Hello everyone and welcome to the third video in Make a Game, a series on making a cool little video game in Unity. In the last video we made our first script and I talked about uh, components and game objects and overall how to use Unity to do coding functionality. And in this one we are going to expand on some of the code we made the last time to make our ball jump. And we are also going to make a script that makes our main camera follow our ball around. And uh, we are also going to talk about 3D perspective and uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So first off, let's open up Unity. I've already done this. And let me just explain the first script we are going to be making here. It's this one. And uh, basically what we want to do is we want to check if we press a button and if the uh, and this could be any button this could be a w this could be the the space bar uh, it could be anything but if the player presses a button and the ball is currently standing on something we want to check for this because else we would be able to jump a unlimited amounts of times in the air and therefore almost fly so we want to check if the ball is standing on something before you can jump well then we want to make the ball jump and we do this by adding velocity on the y axis if you don't know this 3d space is composed by three axes a normal screen uh, just uses two so a 2d surface uses two axes and these are normally called the x and the y axes and this is what makes up everything you see on a 2D display. But once we add the depth in 3D, we get the Z axis. So whenever we want our ball to jump, if we look at it from this perspective here, we want him to jump in the Y axis. So we add velocity. Now, uh, that's the first thing we're going to be making. I know this is the second thing and it all looks very confusing but trust me, it's not, we'll get into it, don't worry. So cool, so today we're just gonna be doing all kinds of fancy scripting stuff to make our build, uh, game fun to play. And, uh, and then the next time we can uh, do some level design and make it look cool. Okay, so I've talked enough already. Let's double click the ball control script, which is the one we are going to be changing. So double click it to open it up in Mono Develop, and it opened up on my other monitor. So there we have it. I'll just zoom in here so you guys can see. And uh, okay, so first off, let's make the variable we are going to be needing. This one is called jump height or strength or whatever you want to call it. I'll call it jump height. And by default, this is going to be equal to eight. That's just an estimate of how uh, large the number should be. I actually can't remember quite exactly. Then we want to make a private variable. And this is something we are going to be using uh, just in a sec. And basically, uh, to explain what a private variable is, let me first explain the variable again. So the variable is a container of information. It's basically a box where we can put everything in and then later open it and use it in a script. Like we do here, we make a box with the rotation and then we open it and access everything in it and then we use it with the delta time. Um, that's, that's the basic idea of it. Uh, but we also have different kinds of boxes. We have a, a box which we can change inside of Unity. So a, that's just a normal variable. This can only be accessed inside of the script or by changing it in the inspector panel. Then we have private variables, like the one we are going to be making now, called private var. And this is basically a closed box, which you can only access inside of this script, which won't show up in the inspector. And then, of course, we have static variables. These are, um, these are often confused with public variables. And what they do is it's basically a box open to everyone so all the other scripts can also access it. 
but uh, we'll just leave uh, start up with a private variable here we'll get into using the other ones at some point probably so private var and we are going to call this is falling and the reason why we want this to be private is because we don't want to be able to change this inside of unity this is only something we need in the script and this is going to be equal to false remember this semicolon cool now in the function update let's go down below every uh, where we handle the rotation and uh, actually right above that let's make a new line and then two slashes like this two dashes and uh, that means a comment so whenever we make these two signs we can write whatever and it won't do anything it's only a comment on the script so here we can write handle rotation handle ball rotation let's call it that uh, but you can write everything you want so if you find that i tell you something you find hard to remember please write a comment about it or something you you wouldn't be able to just look at and know what is write a comment it's great and it makes it easier for others to read your code too okay moving on i'm really rambling today <laughs> i'm sorry okay so now we want to add uh now we want to check for input so we type if open a parentheses and if statements uh i'll explain that in a sec let's first type input dot get key down open parentheses key code dot w you can also do dot space i'll do dot w close the parentheses close the other parentheses and then make two bracket keys okay so this all looks very confusing uh it's not you might get the basic idea if statements are made for checking if things are true if things happen uh, if things are equal to other things it's made for checking all kinds of stuff and therefore if so if the requirements inside of these parentheses are met then it will call all of the code it will um, do all of the actions we put inside of these two bracket keys that's what an if statement does and if statements are some of the most used things in coding uh, now let's take a look at the requirement we put here it's called input dot get key down so if we get the key pressed called key code dot w and there are many ways to write this we could also do get button down and then jump this is actually a better way to do it though it's not always set up correctly we'll have a look at buttons later probably but for now we'll just type get key down key code dot w like that and then close it off awesome so uh, there are also different kinds of uh, input events we could also just say get key this is if you want something to happen all the time when you're pressing a button so this is this will call the function as long as you're uh, pressing the button get key down will call it only when you press it which means once and get key up will call it when you release the button which again means once inside of this we'll now type rigid body again just when we uh, as we did when we access the um when we access the rotation or the torque uh, we will now access the velocity and then we will do it in the dot y axis which means up and down and we want this to be equal to jump height so basically we are setting a velocity for our object on the y axis to the jump height which is 8 which means it will go up if this was negative 8 it would go down and cool now that we have that in place uh, let's go ahead and test it out you will notice that we haven't used our private variable there yet we'll get to that in a second i just want to show you what we have so far so if we hit play now 
And remember, we already have the script attached to our ball, so we don't have to do that again. We can see it's sitting right there. And we have the jump height variable. And if we hit jump with W, we can see our ball jumping nicely. And we can combine this with our ability to move. And all of a sudden, we have a pretty fun game. Uh, there is one problem, though. If I press W a whole lot, my ball goes flying. And I can do that an infinite number of times. So to get rid of this, again, we will make sure to check if it's standing on something. For this, Unity has made a function we can use. Normally, when you check for things, you use the if statement I just showed you. But this time, we're not going to use the if statement. We are going to use the a separate function. So outside the function update, let's again type function. And this one is called on collision stay. This is something Unity made for us in order to check for stuff like if we are on the ground. It's a really great feature, but it's unusual to check for something outside an if statement. So this is really only when you're doing collision and triggers, then you type it in a separate function. If you want to check for something in all other cases, you use the if statement as a general rule. So open up the bracket keys and in here we can type is falling should be equal to false. Because now with, when we collide with something or stand on an object, we are not falling. Awesome. Then we can go under the if statement here. We can go and tell, uh, we can add something to our if statement. Basically, we want to check whether or not we are falling. So uh, instead of making a separate if statement inside of this one, we could do that. We could make it look like this make the separate if statement in here and then just change this. Then we will simply use the and sign to check for multiple things. So right next to the input.get button down key code.w, we will make a space, use the two and symbols. There needs to be two of them another space, and now we can just type another requirement which needs to be met. This one is of course, is falling should be equal to false. And whenever you check if a variable is something, you use two equals. If you only want to assign a variable or tell the variable to be something, you use one equals. All of this is not something I um, I, uh, you should remember just off of the top of your head. It will come slowly but surely. surely. For now, you can just type after me and then uh, you will get it in the future, I promise. So, it, it, and is falling is equal to false. So if we are on the ground. Uh, and then, of course, if we do jump, then we want our is falling to be true because we are not longer on the ground. We have just jumped, we have added our velocity, we cannot be on the ground any longer. So now that we have this code, let's go ahead and save it, and we should have a beautifully working jump function. So let's go ahead and jump a few times. And there I was actually able to jump twice. And this is because it's a really good idea to move the is falling outside of this if statement and put it right there. Uh, the reason why is not something I'm going to explain. Uh, it's a little longer, just make sure to put it there and it should handle the code correctly. It's something about how Unity reads code. Now we should be able to jump just right up and down and roll from side to side. And if I just keep on pressing the button, we can only jump once we hit something. Great, so now we got our basic controls working. Congratulations, that's the first part of this video. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the video off here, guys, since else it's going to, going to continue off in the distance. But uh, part B will be out 
soon hopefully i will um i will not take too long before it comes out don't worry so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video Thank you.